What is one of the leading causes of electrical fires in homes today? Right here, faulty outlets, faulty plugs. Why is that the case? And what can you do to make sure your home is safe? According to the Electrical Safety Foundation, there are over 50,000 fires in homes a year caused by faulty electrical. It accounts for over 500 deaths and over $1 billion in property damage. Well, first of all, these things are amazing, right? This is how we get electricity to power our appliances, TVs, refrigerators, home electronics, you name it. This is how we safely take the electricity coming into our home and transfer it to the devices we use every day for comfort, education, entertainment, convenience. However, it's something we don't think about a lot because it's there. And what do we have to do? It's not like a car or an air conditioner that maintenance has to be done, or does it? Well, one thing that should be done is your home should get an electrical safety inspection every single year to make sure that your system is operating properly, your entire electrical system. That includes the electrical panel, all of the outlets, switches, appliances, everything in the home, including carbon monoxide detectors and smoke detectors. Now, what happens with the outlets? and why it is one of the leading causes of electrical fires in homes is wiring connects to these plugs. And what happens over time, movement of the house causes them to get loose. Use, plugging in and unplugging, things like that causes them to get loose. And electricity causes heat. So the heat that is generated in the wiring can cause them to get loose over time. Now, you may say movement in the house. What kind of movement in the house does my house have? Well, ground shifts, and that's just not when there's an earthquake. There's settling, there's shifting, and if you are an area prone to tremors, even more so. A lot of things can cause the wiring to get loose. Age itself is gonna cause this wiring to get loose, and when this wiring gets loose, it causes arcing, and that's what leads to fires. I can't tell you how many electrical inspections our electricians do, and we find this is an issue. We find the back of the outlet or the receptacle has started to melt already. We have, as part of our electrical inspection, and any good electrical inspection should include this, and it's actually something you can do at home with the right tools, is thermal imaging of the outlet. You can see if it's running too hot. Heat is a very good indicator that there's an issue with your outlets. We go through the home and we use infrared on the outlets, right? And then we may have them all operating in normal range, and then there's a particular outlet that's running hotter than it should. That's an indication we need to look at that and check that out. So one, electrical safety inspection every year in your home. Two, you should have these changed out. You should change out your outlets. You should change out your light switches on a regular schedule. Some people would say 10 years, some people 15, 20. Some may say five. What determines how frequently you should do it? Well, the biggest indicator is the quality of the receptacle that was installed originally. Have you ever had an instance where you plug in a vacuum cleaner and it just falls right out of the receptacle because the prongs inside will no longer hold the vacuum? Well, that's a sign of just normal wear and tear and aging. And a lower priced receptacle will tend to suffer that a lot sooner because when you plug in and you unplug, it's gonna cause wear. So. That's one indication. I don't care how old your receptacle is, if you can't keep something plugged in, if you find yourself propping the plug up to stay connected, it's time to change your receptacle. I can't tell you some of the things we've seen in homes. Tape wrapped around and then taped to something. Ropes are holding the plug up and in. So don't get creative, just replace it. If you are versed and you know how to do electrical work, fantastic. It's something you can do on your own. Now, if you're like most people, you're not familiar with electricity, you're not comfortable with electricity, then obviously you wanna get an electrician to do this. And it's the preferred method. Don't be a weekend warrior when it comes to electricity, right? A lot of people think it's safe, they watch a YouTube video. Look, electricity is dangerous stuff. Leave it to the pros, call a licensed electrician, let them do a inspection, and if there's recommendations, listen carefully to what they are, because it could literally be the one thing that prevents you from experiencing some sort of devastating event, such as a house fire. And while we're on that note, smoke detectors. Make sure you have your smoke detectors, make sure they're working, test them every year, change the batteries out once a year. You know, daylight savings time's a great time. I'd even say change them out twice a year. A lot of smoke detectors are hardwired into your home's electrical system, 
and have battery backup. Some just have batteries. If you just have batteries, I would test it more frequently, change those batteries more frequently. The other thing, carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide poisoning is a real thing. It's called the silent killer for a reason. It's not gonna give you a warning. It's not like a natural gas leak where you're going to smell it. You will not know. So carbon monoxide detectors, some states it's a requirement. It's building code. Make sure you get a carbon monoxide detector installed, test it regularly, keep yourself safe, get your electrical inspections and take care of you and your family.